what a game between the Bucks and the Heat last night. Giannis's team down one, going in, looking to bounce back. Let's go right to the finish. Under 20 seconds to go. Bucks are down six. Keep an eye on the ball movement. Giannis gets a dunk, but that's not what I mean. Now keep an eye on the defense. The Bucks playing deep. They've got Jimmy Butler trapped in the corner. What's he going to do? Well, he's going to do the last thing you should. He just throws it up towards his own basket. Up goes Brooke Lopez. It's a two-point game. Eight and a half to go. Now we got under eight seconds to go. Bucks inbounding down by three. Keep a close eye on Chris Middleton. Goran Dragic goes up straight. You tell me if that's a foul. You tell me as we show it to you again because it is called a foul and Middleton gets three free throws. We'll find out what my guys think it was a good call or bad in a moment. Middleton makes all three. We're tied. Now, Heat inbounding. Jimmy Butler in the corner. Here comes Giannis for the help. Butler, no good, but hold everything. The hands in the air, the whistle blows. It's a foul on Giannis with no time remaining. You tell me, is that a call that you make at the end of a tie game in the playoffs? It was made. Butler goes to the line, no time left, just needs to make one of two, and here it is. Ball game, Jimmy Butler. Quiet night, 13 points, but that one wins it. Giannis, 29 and 14, but not enough. The Heat, up two games to nine. Try to make it tough uh, for Jimmy. Um, you know, the ref said that there was contact there. Maybe there was. You know, it is what it is. I feel like, uh, personally, it was the right play. I've done this uh, multiple times in my career. You know, when the guy's dribbling and he's getting his rhythm uh, going, like, you get, he got four seconds. He's not going to pass the ball. He's going to shoot the ball. All right, let's get right there. Tim Legler, this is a superstar. Down one game to none with no time left on the clock. Is that a good call? I like the call, and I'm going to tell you why. And some people need to look at the replay again because the only reason Giannis Antetokounmpo puts his left hand on Jimmy Butler's side is to brace himself and prevent himself from hitting him with his right shoulder and forearm. So for me, you know, if he doesn't do that, he's going to plow into Jimmy Butler with his right shoulder, and then it's going to be an obvious call. So the fact that he touches a shooter in the air I think for me, it's a call that you really have a hard time arguing with. I listen, I understand people don't want to see a game end, but with free throws, with nobody on the foul line, on, on very minimal contact, and it didn't affect the shot. But the bottom line is, Antetokounmpo did that for a reason. He was preventing himself from hitting him actually much harder with his right shoulder, right hip, right forearm. It would have went right into Jimmy Butler's side if he didn't put his left hand on his body. So I understand why the official felt like he needed to protect the shooter in that situation. Once you leave your feet and you get touched in the air on a jump shot, then you're really opening it for interpretation for the official, and I think it's difficult to argue that. Coach, what do you think? I hate seeing either call being made. I hate uh, I hate it that it comes down to free throws like that on, on two really tough calls on jump shooters. Uh, I, I thought the, the Miami foul was suspect at best. Uh, I thought Goran Dragic did a great job of just getting his hands up and just really, you know, just standing there and, and trying to avoid the foul, uh, even though he should have still not been next to him. Uh, but on the other end, uh, I just uh, – I kind of disagree with legs. I know he touched them some. I know contact is a foul, but you don't like to see a game uh, lost on a touch foul like that. And the bottom line of it is sometimes the circumstance is important. And w with everything that was on the line in that moment, it winds up deciding the game. One way or another, the call is made. The series is 2 nothing. Legs, you told me here the other day, and, and on the radio as well, you thought Miami was going to win the series. Now it's 2-zip. What are the Bucks going to do to get back in this thing? I don't think they're going to come back and beat them four out of five times. They still have a real problem closing out games offensively. And there was a stretch even late in this game. Um, they got back into it mainly because Miami allowed them to get back into it with the foul, Jimmy Butler's turnover. They made some plays at the end that contributed to that. But the way they operate their offense, I'm talking about the Bucks in late game situations, it's very difficult for them because Giannis has some limitations in his game that are going to make, make it difficult for him off the dribble to go get a basket and decide things. Um, and the Miami Heat, they just move the ball. They've got Jimmy Butler. They've got Dragic. They've got a couple different guys that can take the ball anywhere on the floor with a live dribble and escape traps and get themselves a good shot when they need to. So in a series when you're expecting close games, I just like Miami much more and trust them much more in close game situations. And I think Milwaukee has a serious problem on their hands now, obviously down 2-0. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.